Hey y'all, super excited about today's episode on Dirt Race Life. We need a tire grinding machine. What did I do? I'm on a budget. I ordered in the parts here. My budget was around $250 for this. We're gonna use scrap steel I've got here in the shop, plus just these parts right here, and we're gonna build this. And I wanna show you how I'm gonna go about doing it. All right, let's get busy. Let's talk about parts for a second. This right here is just a cheap, brushless gear drive 120 volt AC motor is what this is. Um, half inch drive with a keyway coming out the end of it. Um, in the past, I have built these tire grinders with like a 12 volt uh, window motor and it, it works good as far as just for like buffing or grinding or something, but it doesn't have the oomph it really needs like when you're trying to do some grooving or some siping and you need some real torque to drive the tire. And so this is kind of a step up for me on this next unit right here. Now it's a brushless motor, so it has to have a controller. This unit right here that I purchased, it comes with a controller with a speed control on and off and the ability for you to reverse direction either direction on it as well. Um, I think maybe around $100, $125. Uh, as far as the details for exactly what this is, and the links to it and everything about it, go to my website, dirtracelife.com. I'll put the whole build, all of the parts that I used on there with links to them and everything where you can check it out in detail. But 120 volt uh, brushless motor there. And then I went with a trailer hub and spindle. So that's a replacement spindle and hub right here. And this is five on five, cause that's what we're doing on this one. And this is of course way overrated, but cost wise, it's like about $50 for this with bearings and everything you need. So by far cheapest way for me to do this as well. And of course I'm gonna take and knock those studs out and put five eighths in, you know, that way I can use some one inch lug nuts just quick on and off. And when I put the, uh, put the five eighths studs in, I'm just gonna put three of them. I won't put all five because this is just for a tire stand, grinding stand, we don't need them. And then the other part is the sprockets. I went with number 40 chain sprockets right here. So this is the drive hub. And I think this is like an 11 tooth and maybe like a 39 tooth. Again, I'll put it all on my website, exactly what he used. And I did want to point out that probably the most challenging part of this is, you know, as far as like doing this yourself at home um, with just garage tools versus machinist tools, this right here is where the challenge is at because you need to attach the sprocket to this hub in a way that you can take this on and off and that it's in the right location. And in the past, what I've done is I've welded this stuff up. But then if you need, you need to change the ratio, you need a little more torque, speed difference, something going on there, you don't have any options and you don't have any adjustability. Wherever you fix this, you've got to make sure you mount everything where that you can make your chain line up and work and stuff. And so I think I've come up with a solution for that that I want to show y'all for how to mount this in a way that make it removable, but without having to have a machinist tool. But by far, this is what you got to really look at. You got to make sure you've got a plan for how to put these together. Um, the chain, the studs, that makes it up. Again, I'll put everything links to it on the website itself. Now let's talk about that scrap steel we're going to use to build the base. So basically what I did was I just looked in the rack to see what I had. And I have a 10 foot stick here of inch and a half 14 gauge square tubing that I had bent by accident because for some reason I thought it would make a good pry bar. It didn't make a good pry bar. But we're gonna use this for the base, this 14 gauge inch and a half right here. Cut it up, make the base. And the other thing I wanna show you is we're gonna need some pieces. We're gonna need a plate to mount that motor. And I've got a piece that's a piece of scrap off a car. I think this is like off of a bumper mount right here, but it's good and solid. It's rusty, but it'll clean up. And I think that piece right there would make a good mount for that brushless motor where that I can have it on a pivot where I can tighten that chain up. And if it won't, then I've got a piece of a uh, 3 16th right here I can use. And then I've just got some odds and ends here if I need to make a, a mount or, or some little piece or anything like for the holder, for the controller, whatever. I just want to point out, we're just using scrap steel. We're going to order the parts we need tight budget here use what you've got come up with a plan for it so what's our base going to look like here's what i'm thinking the tire and this is on edge right here i want that tire to be mounted 
with the top of the tire 42 inches off the ground. And the reason that I'm going with 42 inches is because I want it to be high enough where that I can stand up and run a grinder or a siphon tool or something and be standing and be comfortable. Um, and hopefully it's low enough so that I can put the grandkids to work and they can reach the top of the tire from there. So I'm going with 42 inches. Um, on average, my tires are 28 inches tall. So that means I'm 14 inches down from there for the center. So this spindle is going to be mounted at 28 inches for that piece right there that tube to the ground the way i'm going to do this base i'm going to do this like an inexpensive tripod engine stand if you know what i mean there i'm going to have a leg that goes out forward farther than the tire so i'm probably going to make like a 24 inch leg to go out and then i'm going to make 28 inch leg and let's see if i looked at it on end so like if i looked at it on end It'll have a leg that goes out sideways. And I'm going to make that 28 inches so it is as wide as the tire. 28 inches across. So just a three-legged device. Um, and then that's going to give us the stability we need. But it's going to make it as light as possible. Um, we, don't want to, you know, we don't want to have any more weight in this than what's required. Now, right now, for this piece... All we're concerned with is getting this spindle right here mounted level, okay? That's our first priority because we want to get the base built, then we'll mount, make sure we mount this level because we want to have the tire and wheel assembly mounted to this fixture before we ever figure out where that brushless motor and sprockets and chains and everything lines up. The reason for that is because our clearances as far as all of our different offset wheels and tires, trying to make sure nothing's gonna hit and all of the different types will fit and everything, well, we need to have a wheel and tire mounted up on there because we're just forming this up on the fly, figuring it out. So first things first, let's get that base built. this first and weld it up here of course this stuff it doesn't have to be perfect y'all this is this is not this is not perfection Right here, I'm trying to make sure I get that spindle pointed just right and good and level and everything. Get it all just like I want. Spot there. Check it out. Make sure it's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's where I want it. studs out right here nothing to this get them out of the way where we can drill out three of these holes put these 5 8 studs in oh we're moving quick now Done. 
course, I went ahead and drilled all five out while I was at it. That way the hub would be uniform all the way around. But you see, I didn't put but three studs in it. I mean, you could put five if you wanted to. It wouldn't matter. But just for a tire stand, I just don't see the need in it. So I never do. All right. And they're in and done. And this is ready. I'm not going to put the seal in it right now because there's going to be a little bit of welding later that's going to go on on this hub right here. Even though it's cast, we're going to spot some stuff on here. Um, so we're going to leave the seal out until all of that's through. Um, and we're just going to put it together dry. I'm not going to put any grease or anything in it, but we're going to be able to get a tire mounted up on it and see how this motor is going to mount. All right, so I went ahead and took that paint off the backside because that's going to get some spot welds on it. Oh, this joker up on here. Like I said, everything's dry right now uh, because it's going to come back apart and get a seal and everything when we're done. And then when we do that, we'll throw some grease in there. It won't take much grease, but we'll throw a little bit of grease in there. All right, All right let's get a tire up here and see if I got enough clearance. I think I did. I think I cleaned this right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought I had enough clearance. Now this wheel right here is a four offset wheel. Um, and so, and four offset, whether it be on an eight inch rim or a 10 inch rim, for me, this is my deepest, okay? And so I was able to sit this spindle back to the back of this and have clearance. But, um, you know, you don't have to. I mean, the spindle could have been mounted to the face and welded up. You could have done it. It made it easier for me to get it level doing it this way but if you need the tire clearance you know you could go to the face you need to check that though you need to pay attention to it and um you know and there's nothing that says that i couldn't put a, a one inch spacer on the front of this hub i mean if i needed to for some reason if i ever like i don't know had a five offset maybe of course i can't run a five offset i don't think it'd clear on my cars anyway so so as you can see here we're on this is like phase one like within 30 minutes of real world work, we now have, you know, just a tire stand. Like we could, we could buff all day long on a stand like this. It'd be real handy at the track, just this. All right, but our next step two is to put the drive on. And the way we're gonna do this, it's really not that bad because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the sprocket onto the back of the hub first, put our sprocket on our motor right here, and we're gonna figure out hanging the motor in here now we want the motor to be as close to the center and as low as possible just for center of gravity make it more stable but we're going to figure out where this will sit and cut the chain so that we get a piece of chain we're going to hang it in the chain and from that we're going to be able to figure out what should the plate look like cut the plate put the adjuster slots in the plate where we can twist the motor on it to adjust the chain and then we're literally just going to weld the plate up onto the spindle right here and we'll be done and doing that i mean don't get me wrong a little bit tedious put a level on here make sure the chain's got good alignment and everything going on there but literally that's all it is to it and then beyond that we just got to figure out you know how do we mount the control box you know and wire it up and everything like that so let's go on to step two all right let's get to some good stuff here i said getting the sprocket onto the hub was by far going to be the biggest challenge and I had really, you know, studied this. I welded some directly on, trying to figure out how do you go about doing this out of your garage at home, you know, without a full set of machinist tools and everything to like fabricate components to bolt together. It's a real challenge. All right, so you've seen I've cleaned this hub off right here. This sprocket, if you'll notice, I have taken and I've got four 5 16 two inch bolts in this. The faces, the hex face on them, I have got the flat turned toward the middle all the way around. Each one of these, the flat is turned toward the center. And I figured out the brand of sprocket and the way one was made where that I could take and bolt four bolts up like this and drop them on and I can attach those four bolts to the sides all the way around. Let me show you. So I can attach those bolts, spot weld them up, and now I've got a removable sprocket that's not had to be machined in order to do it, and I've got adjusters on it to where that I can adjust my sprocket in or out, and I can correct 
if it's out of alignment. <laughs> so I'm like, it works. Um, so we're gonna put this on and I think it's gonna be just beautiful. It's a beautiful way to solve the solution at home out of the garage. So really excited about it. Let's hope it works out as well as I'm planning you for it to. <laughs> All right, so I made up some spacers right here. This is just some three inch grinding rocks because all I'm wanting to do is I want to have something that I can sit on there in order to make it sit parallel to start with. Because I want all my bolts to be parallel, you know, on the same plane around to start with where I'm not have adjustments different right off the bat. So got some, just put some grinding rocks in there to create a spacer and I'm gonna hold it down and I'm gonna spot it up and that's gonna be ready to go. All right. This is gray cast. I am gonna say this right up front. Yes, this will crack and break when welded and got, if you get it super hot in one spot, you know, it can crack on you and break, all right? What I'm doing here, no, it's not gonna be a problem. If I just went crazy and kept welding and got this, you know, cherry red in a spot, you know, all at once really quick, and then it cooled down really quick, you know, it could. But this small amount like I'm doing right here, it's not going to be a problem. The amount of pressure that this is getting put on it, as far as these being brittle, because where the weld goes into the cast, it is going to be brittle around that weld. And that's why like, you'll use a nickel rod and stuff, because the nickel is soft, um, and it helps it to, to bind to that cast um, without creating a lot of tension right at the weld point. Um, you know, that's why I use a nickel rod and stuff. It would be better if I used a nickel rod. I just don't feel the need for it for this. But uh, you've been warned, you know, it is a risk. I think it's very minor. I have no issue doing it, especially for something that's not on my race car, a race part. Remember, your safety is your responsibility. But this is tire grinding tan. This isn't a hub on the car. So I treat it differently as far as that goes. The link for this sprocket, don't worry, I'll put it on the website. And what I love about this is this pattern right here is a, this is like a universal pattern that I found in a lot of different brands and I can change my tooth count on this and just unbolt and bolt and it's not machined. Oh, you gotta love it. All right, so let's get it back on our tire stand. Like I said, those were just spacers we used to set that sprocket up. Now, the beauty of this is those nuts that I have on there. I can turn those out. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm just gonna back all of them up a little bit to go ahead and set some adjustments. So there is a half and one. So I'm gonna set all of them out one turn. That way I got some adjustment both ways. Right. There we go. And we can, like I said, leaving the seal off. I'm just leaving the seal off right now. And then when I get completely done with everything, I'm gonna go back and throw the seal in it, put some grease in it and the whole nine yards. Ran into a small problem. This drive rod here that I believe was advertised as a half inch drive is actually 12 millimeter, but my sprocket is half inch with the same as 13 millimeter. Um, so I do have a problem there. So in the meantime, I am gonna put some shim stock on here to take up my distance and it will work just fine. Oh yeah, that's tight. Okay. Right there, put the keyway in. Everything can get real tight. Tighten the set bolt up. All right. All right. So we've got our key on and we've got our sprocket here. Let me back y'all just a little bit. So y'all can see this. And so now I got to figure out how much chain. That's the next thing. 
like I said, I want this to be fairly close and then just have a little bit, I'm thinking I'm going to orbit it. Maybe I'll rotate it like this for an adjustment. But we'll want to figure out the chain at max. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to, just going to freehand this. It's not that bad. It would help if I had an assistant right now. A little closer. All right, let's see right there. We got our chain put together. For those of y'all who have never fooled with it before, you can see that's my, that's a full link. And it's just a pin um, link that goes in and it's got a clip on the other side. It's real simple. So it's easy to make chains shorter, harder to make them longer. Um, Cause then you've got to buy extra links and half links and stuff when you need to make them longer. I think we're gonna be able to make this work. So we'll drop that on, all right. We'll take and put the drive with the sprocket down, motor up. It's going to sit right in here. Okay, I've been looking at this plate right here. And here's what I think we're going to do. I'm going to take this plate and I am going to take and cut slots from this hole down where that the motor can slide up and down where the sprocket drive is going through. And then turn around and where the four bolts are, the four bolts is going to go. I'm going to slot in on the top and slot in on the bottom where I can loosen the bolts up and slide and then the whole motor is going to go up and down for chain adjustment. And that's the way we're going to do it. And then I'm going to turn around and when we put it on there, I'm going to weld this plate to the bottom of our spindle shaft right here. So I'll weld it to the bottom of that shaft and then I'll probably just when we're done put a gusset across just from a torque from the side load like it right there. That's it, and then our motor will be mounted. So let's get that done. Let's get this thing laid out here. <laughs> All right, looky there, y'all. I think that's gonna work. got a plate here, there are adjusters, got me some flat washers I'm going to add to make sure I got a good clamping surface. Got a washer on that one, one there, and one there. Probably only going to have to put this thing together and take it apart about 10 million bajillion times y'all. It's just part of it. All right, so I got this laid over on the side here. This is gonna go right in here. All right, now this chain won't quite go on this sprocket. It's close, but that makes sense because I need to cut a little notch out right here. So I'm gonna take a little notch until that will drop in there and then we'll set it all, line it all up and we'll weld that sucker. So I'm gonna take and just lay this right beside here on the shaft, like that. And I'm gonna give her a, a mark on that right there. And let me see, I'll get a piece of tubing. There's a piece of inch and a half tubing as a guide there. That spindle, I think that spindle is an inch and a half. We're just gonna make a shallow cut right there we'll make a shallow cut right there see how that works see did you put that all right see so y'all see where i cut a little notch out right there i'll take and see if i can get this under the chain there and then I'm gonna roll it. And so that notch, it's sitting in that. So now, all we've gotta focus on is getting everything aligned. I've got plenty of adjustment to slide this motor down. So I wanna make sure when I weld it up, I've got slack in it and then I adjust it out. And so I've got, got slack here. So basically, 
I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to let it sit. I'm going to use the chain as a guide. And I made sure I moved my sprocket out a little bit where I got adjustment this way. And the main thing I need to focus on is just making sure that I've got this motor square. So I'm going to use a magnetic square here against this base because um, I know I set the spindle square to the base. So if I set this motor like that with a magnet square to the base, now I know I'm in alignment this way. And I'm laid flat to the base. Here it's laying on it. So I mean like literally this is it's it. It's lined up. So well that's if I had four hands to hold everything. But uh, I'm really welded up. Okay, so that's on there. So that's on there. So now I can take, and now I'm going to have to actually unbolt it because um, I've spotted that in. And the next weld I make, I'm not going to weld the plate up. I'm going to put a gusset right here, all right, to hold it this way. I'm going to put a gusset right there. That's the next move I'm going to make um, in this. And so this thing assembly is getting more and more complicated. So like now the hub's gonna have to come off, you know, as part of the assembly process. Um, but it is what it is. We're getting close. Alright y'all, painted, got the main motor base, everything assembled, put the bearings in and the seal in. Still need to put the dust cap on, hadn't done that yet. But I'm not going to grease this chain. Slow turning, it's, it doesn't need it. Um, that would just make rubber and stuff stick to it and make it nasty. And so I'm going to just leave the chain dry and the way this thing's being used, it's never going to be an issue. And hopefully it'll keep me from getting grease all over me, keep it dry and clean. Um, and I left the chain uh, fairly loose. I got the adjustment all the way up with lots of slack in the chain just to start out with, make sure I don't have any type of issue with the sprocket not being on there square or anything like that. Um, and still, I mean, that 40 chain with that small of an amount of distance between them, very little movement and I'm not worried about it. But next thing we got to do is we got to put the control units brush motor got to have a control unit for it and that just plugs in like that um and then you see i've got my ac uh common and hot they don't even distinguish the difference between them and then you see the ground so real simple wire up doesn't matter which ones the black and the white go to just as long as they're both on the ac and you don't put them on the ground and it will be fine remember your safety is your responsibility. Be careful with this kind of stuff. If you decide to put one of these together and wire it up yourself, um, make sure you are competent in doing these things properly and safely. And if you like how this is going and this type of a video, like this episode we're doing here, um, I've been trying to get this thing done for like a month. These parts have been sitting in my shop. And I finally got to it because I need it, but I wanted to get it out there for y'all as well. Um, and so if this is the kind of stuff that you like seeing everything, man, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Leave me a comment. Um, definitely would help share it. Put it out there. Um, you know, let other people see it and everything. Help us to grow. Um, and, of course, if you love it and you'd like to be a bigger part and have a bigger role in helping us be successful, look on the links on the end of the video and uh, I'll put one up here and you can join as a team sponsor. And uh, for as little as $5 a month or as much as 50 you can do it on Google or Patreon, either one. But it makes a big, big help for us um, to make all this happen. Okay, I got it off. I got it turned all the way down. I'm going to plug it up. Y'all wish me luck. Ugh. Dale!
I didn't throw a breaker, so <laughs> that's good. Green lights on. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power on here. Looks like my fan. I had to work on my fan a little bit. All right, so that's wide open right there. Oh, I got that gearing right, y'all. I got that gearing right. I kind of had to make some guessing on it and do the math because this thing came in multiple gear ratios. But that's spot on. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fab up some kind of a mount for a box right here and clean up this wiring and stuff and get that fan fixed. And then we'll sit down and uh, we can put a wheel and tire on it. I'm thinking I want the control box to be facing straight up where when I'm standing there, I can adjust the speed, flip it on and off when it's easy to get to, right? Um, so I'm going to take and I'm going to make a real simple bent bracket. So all I did was took a magic marker and laid up there and marked the width. There's two holes already there where I can put some self trapping screws. And I'm just going to take, this is a, a really quick way to make a bracket that you can weld on. This works really good, y'all. I'll leave it just like that in the middle. That's it. That's a bracket. That simple. And so now, ooh, that's hot. All right. So now I got where I can bolt that. And so I'm going to take and I'm going to weld that bracket up. I'll just weld that up right there. And then I'm gonna throw that on there and throw a couple self-tapping screws into it. Boom, we're gonna call that good. <laughs> All right, here right here is where the rubber hits the road, folks. Let's see how she does making a cut. All right. Well, at least I got my five on five studs lined up right. Wheels going on easy. I am excited. Now this, um, there's a jumper wire on this box right here and it'll go in either direction. And so I'm thinking about, you know, as far as future modifications go, I probably will put a toggle switch uh, footboard where that my foot, I can rock one way or the other and it'll go left or right or be off because I can use that to do it. Um, but we're just trying to keep this video as short as we can and get all of the critical stuff in here. All right, so there we are. Let me turn it on. All right, so that's wide open. I think that's a little too fast to groove, so I'm gonna turn it down. That's... Let's see, what is that? That's about, uh, that's about 50% or something like that. Now, obviously, I'm gonna build a drawbar across here, I am. Um, you know, I'll probably just put a bar straight out and across right here. But um, kinda wanna get a little bit of time with it and see how it goes and everything before I build the bar to see. But let's just see if we can get it to, oh, that's a little fast. You have to find your number. I'll tell you what, I'll start at zero. And then we'll... Oh, torque's not an issue. Yeah, so the difference between this and the 12 volt is this is going at the speed it's supposed to no matter what. It's just going. You know, so it's not slowing down when it gets under load. It's just It just applies and keeps going. And... Uh, so like I'm sitting on 30% and I could stall it out. Yeah, I could stall it. Oh, can't stall that. Um, so <laughs> plenty of motor, which is what I wanted. I wanted a little bit more than the window motors and everything. Uh, let me turn this off. Okay, important point. So like, this is a rig that is built with just mail order stuff, you know, less than $250 total and everything in it. Um, but you get what you pay for. And I want to make that real clear. Uh, these guys that are building these professional tire grounding stands and, you know, they're $1,000 and more. But 
They've done their R&D on them. Uh, they have sourced their materials for it to be, you know, the, for it, the lifetime of it, to be able to put a warranty on it, to know that it's going to be consistent, it's going to do what it's got to do. They've taken the safety into account and everything. Um, and then the accessories for it in the whole nine yards. So just be clear about that, you know, as far as, you know, you're building stuff in your, in yourself in the shop, you know, on a budget. But just because you can build something like this for $250 does not mean that a $1,000 unit isn't worth $1,000. Um, it's just, you know, where you're at and the amount of labor you put into it yourself versus somebody else who's went in business and doing that. So just keep that in mind because it is a lot of work, but this is one afternoon. And um, anyway, it wouldn't have been nearly as bad if it wasn't 103 degrees in the shop. I hope y'all enjoyed this. If this is your kind of thing, hit the thumbs up. Hit that subscribe, folks, because this is good stuff. All right, I'll see you next time. Man, I'm loving this. I mean, I'm, I'm loving this. It's 10 times better than the last night built.